Dimitar, when we consider what are the ultimate questions that we can ask about the universe, life is always on the list. How do we define life, and particularly, how could we define life as it would appear outside of Earth? You probably know that uh, there is no accepted definition of life. Um, as a community, science as a whole hasn't uh, come to the point of understanding enough of the nature of life generally to be able to define it in a way in which everybody is happy with the definition. However, from a practical point of view, and as an astronomer, I want to give you the astronomy perspective mm -hmm. on that. I want to use a definition which at least covers some of the important points. And that is that life is probably something defined as a self-sustained chemical system capable of Darwinian evolution. So the most important aspect So that seems like three elements, that, just to be clear. Three elements. Self-sustaining. Self Darwinian evolution capable, not necessarily chem Chemical. Chemical. And chemical is the most important yeah. for me. So self-sustaining, chemical, and capable of Darwinian evolution. That's right. That's a definition which is so often um, referred to as the NASA definition, or uh, Jerry Joyce, who was then the committee chairman of that uh, particular work, which was done in 1995, around that time. So, to me, as an astronomer, the most important aspect of that is that life is a chemical system. That's essentially, it's a chemistry networks which involve chemistry that are required in order for what we call life to emerge and to sustain itself in astrophysical conditions. Okay. H how do you look at different generations of life? Uh, because you, you might have one generation in one place and it may form someplace else. Uh, uh, do, you, do you look upon each uh, element of life as, as, a, as a separate uh, uh, origination or might there be transference between different forms of life? To me, again, from the astronomical perspective, it is important to separate life which originated from the geochemistry of the planet. That is a biochemistry that is directly rooted into geochemistry of a planet. And then we can imagine a second generation of life which already has emerged through geochemistry to adapt itself or to be able to create forms that are adaptable to other astrophysical environments, to other planets or to other astrophysical environments altogether. So from a physical perspective, you have to separate the two. And I would call them first generation life versus second generation life. And they have different characteristics? And they would have different characteristics. From my astronomy perspective, it is uh, helpful to differentiate from life, which I would call first generation, that emerges from the geochemistry of the planet. That would be a biochemistry that is rooted in the geochemistry of the planet and then develops its own tree of life with all its adaptability and differences that, uh, and richness that um, uh, this entails. We know one example of first generation, that's us here on planet Earth. But we uh, can imagine what would be the characteristics, at least some of the characteristics of a second generation of life. Uh, one of them will be either that this is a first generation of life, like our own, which adapted to very different astrophysical conditions, different planet or different environment altogether. Another example of second generation life we could um, imagine is um, life that was synthesized by a first generation mm. a form of life. Um, we would call it synthetic biology or chemical synthetic With biology. Totally With a totally different Right. Capture. The biochemistry has to be different so that the new tree of life will not be in any way related to the original generation first tree of life, which is already rooted in the geochemistry. Mm. Uh, but uh, that is important only in order to understand their uh, astrophysical environments. And that's why I'm saying that this is my perspective as an astronomer, because if I'm practically uh, going out and trying to search for life on other planets or on anywhere in the galaxy. I need to know where to look and what I'm looking for. And uh, the most practical aspect of uh, doing this at this point is to look for first generation life. That is, for look for 
places, Earth-like planets most likely, where first-generation life could have emerged and still exists in a way in which it has transformed the geochemistry of the planet, which we can detect from remote sensing. Are you saying that uh, first-generation is more difficult and that if you have a first-generation, it is potentially adaptable to a more hostile environment in a second-generation? That's what I'm saying, but uh, then that's uh, the only example we have of life <laughs> that's our own, and it's very dangerous to generalize things based on a single example. On the other hand, what has happened here on planet Earth that we know through the geological record and the diversity of the tree of life today uh, gives us multiple examples of this happening. So although we have a single example of a biochemistry, we see how this biochemistry has evolved in many different ways. And we can imagine adaptability happening in many diverse ways in other environments. So to some extent, we have more than one examples of the process of adaptability and colonization changing the astrophysical environment than simply uh, one point of reference. Can you, in principle, tell the difference between a first generation and a second generation? Uh, some people claim that life on Earth is a second generation, that it came from uh, comets or meteorites that uh, carried life from other places. I mean, that may be a fringe idea, uh, but can you, in principle, tell the difference? Um, from what we know so far, in principle, it will be very difficult to tell the difference. And I'm saying this simply because most of that reflects our ignorance of what the nature of life is and certainly uh, of what the second generation life could be. However, from a practical point of view, I'm just pointing out that it is much easier to design a plan to look for first generation life and to speculate about its distribution in the galaxy. Uh, while uh, if we talk about second generation life, we essentially have no clue at this point. I'm just pointing out that we have to differentiate the existence of first and second generation life simply to understand what potentially the distribution could be in the galaxy. But what I would search for will be simply first generation life. Sim it's a practical way to maximize our chances of detecting anything.